Wirecard, the payment processing company, founded and run by CEO Marcus Brown, which was once considered the darling within the world of German fintech, earned money by processing payments, taking a small commission in the process, and ensuring that money was transferred from customers to the vendors. However, the firm was subject to intense scrutiny from the Financial Times, and especially their investigative journalist, Dan McCrum. And the firm's share price plummeted by 97% after the company announced that 1.9 billion euros was missing from the firm's accounts in June 2020. But how did the company rise to fame and then fall from grace so dramatically? Here's how it happened. Wirecard was founded in 1999 and Marcus Brown, the CEO, invested capital in the business to ensure its survival in 2002, following the dot-com boom and bust. He consolidated the business to focus on payment processing, earning money through financial transactions on the internet. In the early years, the firm's customer base was predominantly adult websites, including pornography and gambling companies, giving the firm a dirty image in the industry. However, as the company continued to grow, they attracted more reputable clientele, including airlines and supermarkets such as Lidl and Audi. The firm found itself in the perfect position as online payments continued to grow through the noughties as the internet became more and more sophisticated and led to the firm listing on the TechDAX, the German technology exchange, in a reverse IPO in 2006, before listing on the German stock exchange, the DAX, in 2018. Its continued growth saw investors such as SoftBank investing a billion dollars in the firm. After this video, why not check out our video on SoftBank's worst investments? The business positioned themselves as the market leader in a cashless society as online payments became king and their share price continued to rise. However, their fast growth and suspect financial numbers led to the Financial Times investigative journalist Dan McCrum looking into the firm in more detail, suggesting that the numbers didn't add up. Wirecard suggested they had earned a high commission from third parties who operated in Asia, where Wirecard didn't have their own business license. But McCrum was left with the question, if the firm are earning so much commission from third parties, where's all the money? McCrum found that the firm generated 45% of its revenue from customers paying a million dollars or more, even though they were less than 0.05% of the client base. Wirecard then played the role of protagonist in the FT Alphaville stories as the FT followed up on allegations from a whistleblower in the Singapore office who had concerns surrounding fraudulent money transfers, a story that had been squashed by the firm. The FT published the Singapore story with Wirecard retaliating, suggesting it was false, which led to McCrum and the FT being investigated by German regulators Buffin for market manipulation. The FT then discovered a Filipino fisherman and his family living in a house that was meant to be the site of an international payments business. The FT then pressed on and published an article suggesting that profits from Dubai and Dublin were fraudulently inflated and customers listed in documents provided to EY didn't exist. Under pressure from investors, the firm appointed KPMG to conduct a special audit, which they hoped would clear them of any wrongdoing. However, if anything, it exposed them, as KPMG then couldn't verify that most of Wirecard's profits reported from 2016 to 2018 were genuine. They also questioned a billion euros in cash, where the only evidence were documents from a trustee who was no longer associated with the firm. On the 16th of June, Filipino banks then told EY that documents suggesting Wirecard had 1.9 billion euros in cash were spurious, and two days later, the firm announced that the money was missing. Moody's downgraded the firm to junk, Marcus Brown resigned and was later arrested for false accounting and market manipulation, the share price fell 97% in 10 days, and one week after the firm made the announcement, they filed for insolvency. And that's how it happened. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and let us know what you'd like to see next in the comments below. Thanks for watching.